Hi, I'm Hassan, the lecturer here at the Institute of Medical Education, and today we're going to take a look at solutions to Section 3 of ACES GAMSAT Green Booklet, Practice Test 1, specifically Unit 11, questions 36 to 41. So this is some physics. I know physics isn't everybody's popular subject, but um, these questions uh, presented in Unit 11 are actually a nice way to, uh, to, to test your knowledge of kinematic formulas and how to use them. So um, just before we begin, um, you need to understand that the formulas for kinematics, they relate five variables. So we've got displacement, time, initial velocity, final velocity, and constant acceleration. That's key. If we know these five variables for an object under constant acceleration, we can use the kinematic formula to solve for one of the unknown variables. So sorry, if we know one of three of these five kinematic variables. So that's all we need to know, three of the five. So if we take a look at the stimulus, we're told in figure one, a runner, they sprint uh, 100 meters in 10 seconds. So, uh, and we've been given some helpful kinematic, uh, kinematic equations. I mean, they gave you three. There's, there are a couple more. If you studied beforehand, you probably know the rest, but it's okay now. The three provide are fine. Um, if we take a look at the first question, it says, um, which is the best estimate for the of time that the runner took to run the final 50 meters. So um, this is actually straightforward. Remember, uh, velocity equals distance on time, and we're looking for time. So we're looking for t equals, um, it's going to be d, so distance over velocity. Um, I know you can either represent d or s as distance, but I use d. Um, so we know we've been given 50 meters is our distance, and if we take a look at the graph, so d equals 50. If we take a look at our graph, um, it's it's about the velocity looks like it's it's pretty constant at around 12 to 11, 11 and a half. So it's somewhere between 12, 11 and a half. So let's just say our velocity, since it's constant, let's just say it's about 12. So it's about 12 meters per second. So if we use this formula now, so it's going to be 50 meters. Let's leave the units here because um, we don't want to muck around the units. Um, 50 divided by 12 meters per second. So if you remove that, meters is going to go up top. So it's going to be time, remember? So T is going to equal, so 50 divided by 12 is 12, 12, 12, 12. So that's 48. And um, there's going to be just a bit left over. So it's going to be about, let's say, 4.2 or 4.3. So if we look at the options, um, B is the closest answer. Yep, so it's about 4.2, 4.3. So your answer is going to be, say, 4.3 seconds. So that's your answer for 36. So it's going to be B. So keep in mind these answers because you can use them for the next questions coming up. So the next question, so question 37, um, same deal. They've given us some numbers and we've got to plug them into the equation. So you've got to find the right kinematic equation here. So we've been told that every, we want to find the acceleration over the first 15 meters. So we know that if we take a look over the first 15 meters, if we take a look at the figure one, 15 meters corresponds to a velocity. So our final velocity is going to be 9 meters per second. We know initial because it's asking us over the first 15 meters. So initial velocity is going to be 0. And we also know that the distance, so let's say S in this time. Sorry, I know I used D beforehand, but we'll just use the same as um, they're using here. So the distance is going to be 15 meters. So we've got three of five kinematic variables. And now if we plug it in, we're looking for acceleration. The best one that fits for acceleration is the last one there. It's v squared equals u squared because we've got this, we've got this, plus 2. We don't have acceleration times distance, which we do have. So if we plug it in, it's going to be 9 squared equals 0 squared plus 2a times so 15. So it's going to be 81 equals 
so 2, so 30a, so acceleration, therefore, in this instance, I know I didn't use the um, units, but in the exam, um, for this sort of, question, sort of question, you don't have to use the units, but please, for future questions, do leave the units because it might be important. But over here, we're just looking for acceleration, um, and the units is giving in the answer anyway. So it's 81 divided by 30, so you know 30, 30, that's 60. Um, half of 30 is going to be 15, so 85 is going to be two and a half. So, and the options here, we see that the closest there is D, so 37, two and a half. So, it is about two and a half meters per second per second. So, you know, therefore, the answer for 37 is going to be D. Now, this is where they love to get a bit tricky here. I know Acer loves doing this, but I, there's a couple of ways you can answer question 38 by looking at these graphs. I'll, I'll give you the few ways you can, but there is a very easy way. So it's asking which best represents distance versus time. So this best represents distance versus time, so the graphs. And it's asking the best of the following estimates of time that the runner took to run the first. Uh, sorry. For question 30, I jumped the gun there. It's asking which graph best represents distance versus time for the runner. So remember, distance over time, the, the uh, gradient, because distance divided by time, is the velocity. So if we take a look, the gradient is going to be the velocity. If we look at figure one originally, we see that the velocity from the last, say, 40 meters to 100 meters is pretty constant. I mean, yes, it's moving from 12 to about 11 and a half, but it's very constant, so it's not changing much. So just by eyeballing the graphs, you can see that the only graph where we're not getting this change, because uh, it should be constant. If it's a velocity graph, it needs to be constant, maybe deviating just a bit. But you can see the only graph there from A, B, C, D that isn't changing is C. Every other graph is changing from 40 meters to 100, whereas C is pretty constant. So just by eyeballing it in the GAM set, you just be like, all right, C, move on. But I mean, if you want to, you're probably asking, okay, how else can you do it? What other approaches do we have? So the way I would look at it as, remember from question, uh, from the first question, so uh, 36, we found out that he, the runner ran the first 50 meters in 4.3 seconds. So straight away, go if you look at the um, the graphs in 38, if we go to 4.3 seconds, it should correspond to about 50 meters. So if we go to, sorry, it's, um, sorry, he ran the last 50 meters in 4.3 seconds. So if we go to, therefore, in the first 5.7 seconds, he ran 50 meters. So if he ran 50 meters in the first 5.7 seconds, look at the graphs, and you can see that straight away, I mean, you can you have to cross off B and D, so B and D, because you can see that from those graphs, 5.7 seconds is well over 60 meters, uh, sorry, well over 50 meters. So they're incorrect. So it looks like it's between A and C. And you know as well, if you want, so we know uh, that that's what happened in the last 50 meters. In the first 50 meters, we know that from the previous question, from 37, that he ran the first 15 meters with a mean acceleration of 2.5 meters per second per second. So you can use kinematics there to figure out time is equal to about three and a half seconds. So he ran the first 15 meters in three and a half seconds. So just by using simple kinematics there, so now we know. The last 4.3, he ran 50. The first 15, he ran, he, uh, the first 15 meters, he ran it in 3.5 seconds. If you look at the graphs, um, the graph C, you can see at three and a half seconds, it's about 15, 16 meters, uh, uh, meters. Whereas in graph A, we see that at about three and a half seconds, it's well over. It's about 23, 24 meters. So you can, if you, if, if you had time, in the game set, you never have time. But if you wanted to find other, other avenues, you can either eyeball the graph, you can use previous answers you derived, or you can do more kinematics with more information that you've received.
So that's how you'd answer 38. So the answer for 38 is going to be C. So if we move on to question 39, so questions 39 and 40 pretty much relate to the graph. So in question 39, um, it says the best of the following estimates of time that the runner took to run the first 20 meters. You just got to look at graph C again from question 38, and you see straight away it's going to be about 3.67. So you can see straight away. So 39 has to be C. But, I mean, you're probably wondering, are there any other ways we can answer this? Yes, I did find another way. Um, instead of using just a graph, you can see that um, since it's a linear increase, if we go back to figure one, there's a linear increase in the first 20 seconds. So if there is a linear increase in the first, oh, sorry, there's a linear increase in the first 20 meters in figure one, which we can see. So that means we can calculate the average velocity over 20 meters. And if you do that, you'll find that it's going to equal around three and a half seconds. So again, average velocity is just going to be, um, well, if we do, so time equals, so it's about 20 meters. So remember y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So 20 meters minus zero over x1 is going to be about from the 20, 11 and a half minus zero. And because it's um, time, it's distance. So it's distance over time. So that's distance over time. But because it's average, it's divided by two. So the answer therefore equals, uh, well, I mean, so if it's 20, that's 10. Um, it's about four divided by two, seven. Um, it's going to equal about three and a half to four, I'd say, somewhere between there. So that's how you could do it the other way. But I mean, yeah, it means you have to do more maths instead of just looking at the graph. But there are, again, this is just a, another way you can do it, but uh, there are many ways to peel an orange. So if we just move on now to question 40. So question 40 asks, Of the following the distance that the runner traveled during the first five seconds again take a look at the graph in 38 you see clearly that it's going to be uh first five, seven, 40 meters so you know straight away the answer is going to be 40 so b but again is there another way yes there is another way so um if if you ensure it remember that um he ran the last 50 meters in 4.2 seconds if he ran the last 50 meters in 4.2 seconds, that means he ran the first 50 meters in 5.8 seconds. So straight away, you know that it can't be 60 meters and it can't be 50 meters. Because if he ran the last 50 meters in 5.8 seconds, it has to be less than 50 meters. Uh, uh, so if 5 seconds has to be less than 50 meters, because 5.8 is 50. And if you do some mathematics, you know it's closer to around 40. So that's how you can do it without using the graph. But again, you pretty much need to use the graph to answer this question. It's just right there. In the GAM, so you get the answer right away. So for the last question, this one's the trickiest of the bunch. Um, it's telling you that he ran, or he or she ran the last 200 meters in 19.5 seconds. Remember, um, he ran the first 100 meters in 10 seconds and it was with an uh, we'd say that the final velocity was 11.5 meters in the first 100 meters so they're asking us if the acceleration is constant for the last 100 meters what is the best estimate of velocity so again he ran a lot he ran 100 meters with the final velocity is 11.5 meters per second so that means that if his final velocity is 11.5 meters per second, in the, in the next 100 meters, his initial velocity, so let's just write that down, initial velocity, this or u, so let's just, uh, I'll scrap it actually, let's just use u, be consistent here. His initial velocity is going to be 11.5 meters per second. So that's the first thing we should write down. Um, we also know that the runner ran 19.5 seconds over 200 meters. 
So therefore, um, we know that he ran the last 100 meters in 9.5 seconds. So we know that his average velocity, so we know his average, if he ran 100 meters in 9.5 seconds, and if he ran 100 meters in 10 seconds, that his average velocity is 10 meters per second. If he ran 100 meters in 9 seconds, his average velocity is 9, uh, 11 meters per second. So therefore, in between, if it's going to be uh, 9.5 seconds, therefore his average velocity is going to be 10.5 meters per second. So we've got his average. Now, we also know that he ran the last 100 meters because we're trying to find out for the last 100 meters, his velocity, we know he ran it in 9.5 seconds. So, here are three knowns, and we're trying to find out his velocity. So, let's just try to figure out, I guess, his average velocity in the last 100 meters. So, to calculate the average, remember what we did in the previous question. So, we know that obviously it's going to be um, the final velocity plus the initial velocity over 2. So, that's how you find the average velocity. So we already know what this is, we know what this is, we just don't know what this is. So let's put them into um, the equation. So it's going to be, uh, what do we got? Actually, let's rearrange it. So it's going to be 2 by V average equals V plus U. So 2 by V average minus u equals v, so it's going to be 2 by 10.5 minus 11.5. So 2 by 10.5 is about 21, minus 11.5 is about 9.5. So 9.5 uh, meters per second. Again, I omitted the units for brevity, but I mean, if you wanted to, you could leave them in there, but the answer is expressed in meters per second, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so, therefore, you know the answer has to be, the closest answer is C. So, you're wondering, why didn't you use time for this? I mean, you could use kinematics and other kinematic equations to solve this, but I went a different route. I went using the velocity average and using the averages. Um, there are many, again, many ways to peel an orange. You could have did other kinematics to utilize time in this instance, but I guess time was important here um, because uh, we we pretty much figured out that in 100 meters, he ran he ran 100 meters at 9.5 seconds, therefore his average velocity had to be 10.5 minutes per second. But you could have used this equation differently using other kinematics um, factors and equations. So look, this is a difficult topic for a lot of students because physics isn't any, everybody's strong point, but I do strongly suggest you, you take a look back and understand how we use kinematic formulas and understand why we use them, understand how to read velocity versus time, distance versus time, or um, velocity versus distance graphs. Understand what the lines on the graphs mean, what the gradients mean. If you can do that, and please always use units, you'll do well in these sorts of questions. Um, so if you do have any more comments, please post them in the comment below, or you can contact us directly. We'd love to help you. Thanks for your time. Bye now.